After introducing virtual thread as part of Java 21, for some reason this has become a common question. Is reactive programming dead? First of all, we have to understand one thing that people have been saying Java is going to be dead for 20 years. Is Java dead? Java is more than 25 years old and we Java developers, we love Java. The concepts like sealed classes, sealed interfaces, record, record patterns, virtual thread, etc. Other modern programming languages, they already have. Java team, they have been trying to add all these things one by one for us. This virtual thread project, the project Loom was going on for many years. The main goal of virtual thread is not to compete with the reactive programming. Virtual thread will be helpful to make use of the system resources like a CPU more efficiently. We will also get the non-blocking I.O. benefits behind the scenes. Now this is where the question arises that if I can get the non-blocking I.O. benefit via virtual thread, then why do we need reactive programming? It should be dead, right? I understand the question, but it is wrong to think that the whole point of reactive programming is to achieve non-blocking I.O. We also have structured concurrency, but currently it's in the preview and its goal is different. Whatever it's trying to solve, it's not anything to do with reactive programming. Then what is reactive programming? Reactive programming is a programming paradigm, a special implementation of observer design pattern. It's based on three pillars. Non-blocking I.O., stream-based asynchronous communication with the back pressure support. We need a reactive programming to build reactive system. We understand the first point. Here we do not have any confusion. In this video, we can understand the second and the third points by using an application, which I think that it is the perfect example of reactive system. Before that, Java has already enabled a reactive programming by introducing few interfaces as part of the java util concurrent package the flow class we already have few um, libraries for reactive programming like reactor rx java 2 aka streams etc currently they all use platform threads because that is what we have had before java 21 now as part of java 21 since we have virtual threads these libraries they might start using virtual threads now. As you see, the reactor, they have already updated to use virtual threads. So as you see now, these libraries, they are already going to get the benefit of virtual threads. So virtual thread is not going to kill reactive programming. For the past 20, 25 years, we have been traditionally programming like client server request response this is how we see things this is how we have been coding but if we consider grpc r socket etc they can be a little bit interactive if you have used r socket you will understand that it does not see that client and server it will be seeing this as a two different systems talking to one another it is something like two people talking over the phone the traditional synchronous blocking style code will not be helpful as it does not provide the necessary tools for this communication. This is why we need something slightly different which is reactive programming. Reactive programming is a tool to build reactive system. Now let's take a look at the second and the third point by using one popular application. That application is ChatGPT. Now I want you to observe this. I'm going to ask a simple question. Let's see what it does. As soon as I ask a question, now it's trying to give me a response, right? In the example, what we just saw, the chat GPT took almost seven seconds to provide me the full response. Now let's imagine we do the traditional synchronous blocking style programming. You ask a question, the answer will be prepared and it might take seven seconds then we return the answer now think about the user experience how it will be you ask a question for the next seven seconds nothing is going to happen then you get the response you, you are getting right because this is how the traditional programming we are doing actually 
So we prepare the answer and we return, we return the actual object, the T object. Because of this return type, whoever called this method, they will have to wait for this method to complete till the answer is returned to the caller. Okay. Now, in the reactive programming, when someone calls this method, we do not block the caller. We immediately return something. So that something, right? In the reactive programming, normally we call that publisher. So the publisher, you have to imagine this something like a pipe. So we, as soon as the method is invoked, we return the publisher. Then we prepare the answer asynchronously. Then we send the answer via that pipe as and when it's available. In the traditional programming, you prepare the big answer and you send at once. In the reactive programming, you send, you can send them as chunks as and when is available. As and when you have something available, you can keep on sending them. The reactive programming might still take seven seconds to prepare the answer. That's fine. But the idea here is we do not block the caller and we provide something to the caller as and when something is available. Because of that, it will look responsive. Now, if you if you compare the, if you check the chat GPT behavior, right? It didn't take seven seconds and it, gave, it didn't give me the complete response after seven seconds. Instead, as and when something is available, it kept on sending to the screen so that we could see and the application looked responsive. Completable future is not reactive is mainly because it cannot send stream of values. Completable future can provide only one value at a time. You cannot send stream of values. Now let's come back to chat GPT and I'm going to ask the same question and I would like to show another important feature actually. So if I hit enter, now it's trying to give me something as usual. I say stop and it stopped. In the second example, I asked the question and ChatGPT was giving me the stream of answer. It did not complete the answer fully. But as soon as I saw the rest endpoint one example, I realized, oh, this is how I have to do. Okay, I, I stopped. So when I say stop, then it stopped. You are getting right. Sometimes you might not be interested in the complete response. The complete response might take 30 seconds, 30 minutes, who knows. So it might keep on sending the response. However, you are actually satisfied with the, the partial response. As soon as you received this response, you immediately you are satisfied. Yeah, this is what I need. Stop. So as soon as you say stop, it stopped. You are getting right. So you have the ability to stop the execution whenever you like. If you check, if you check the traditional programming, you will get the answer only after seven seconds or only after 30 seconds. So you cannot cancel because you cannot see anything until the answer arrives. You are getting right. But on the reactive programming, since we are sending the answer in chunks, it's a stream based communication. If you are already satisfied with the partial response, you can simply cancel the execution so that this publisher does not have to do unnecessary work. Let's come back to this one more time. This time I have a different question to ask. Show me the first thousand prime numbers. This is what I'm going to ask. Let's see what it does. So it's trying to give me all the prime numbers. So let's observe this. If you notice, it stopped at 282 and it did not give me the complete thousand prime numbers. Instead, it stopped at 282 and it gives me, it shows this button saying that should I still continue generating? Am I still here? This is how it behaves actually. So if I, if I, wa if I want to see the answer further, I can click on it so that it simply continues from where it stopped. But it did not give me all the thousand up front. If you sit and silently observe this, it will stop at some point. Again, it stopped at 538 and if I want to continue, I can continue. Why I wanted to show that example is mainly because that is what the back pressure is. For example, in the traditional programming, again, we ask a question, 
we prepare the complete response then we provide in the reactive programming since we do the stream based communication just because the caller asks hey can you generate 1 million items the producer does not have to generate all the 1 million items and keep on sending them one by one what if the caller is not using the response we are sending so this is what we are saying the we are saying back pressure that is you keep on generating the response if you think that the caller is not using the response or is a slow consumer the producer will automatically stop that is the back pressure so it will not unnecessarily do any work the producer will automatically stop when it thinks that the consumer is not consuming the items so this is something we can achieve in reactive programming in the traditional programming style we cannot do that so in order for the producer to keep producing the items the consumer also has to consume the items at the same rate if the consumer is slow the producer will stop producing and it will do something else then it will start again only when the consumer is making some progress in this case we clicked on the continue generating button right so we kind of acknowledge or we kind of tell the chat gpt application to keep producing similarly we have to acknowledge or we have to consume the item so that it will keep producing reactive programming is a tool to build reactive system so it does not have to be like two different method in a class it can be completely two different systems the producer could be a database so you might want to execute a query for which it might be sending the response as a stream you are getting right now if you compare this with the virtual threads and the structured concurrency definitely virtual thread is going to help with the non blocking io however virtual thread or the structured concurrency is not going to help with the back pressure or stream based asynchronous communication when we say stream based communication is this something like a completely even driven architecture or something like a kafka stream if you ask like this no it does not have to, doesn't have to be like that we can also use http for example in spring webflex that is what we use right is http but most of us we are still using http 1.1 but spring webflex also supports http 2 the netty in the net in the http 2 we can have stream based communication http 2 is different lot better than http 1.1 so we can have stream based communication in http2 